The site of an ancient Celtic monastery on the Wenlock Edge in Shropshire was home to Robert Hart's forest garden. As an old man in his 80s, he still tended this haven of abundance. Robert died in 2001, but his vision lives on. The most striking feature of his garden was the lack of pests and diseases, achieved by mulching, organic foliar sprays, and the understanding that useful plants can be grown in a succession of layers. This shows four of the seven layers of the natural forest. First, this is an old pear tree which constitutes what is called the canopy, that is the highest layer of the, the seven layer of the natural forest. Then the low tree layer, this is a stag's horn sumac, which the Americans call a lemonade tree, which constitutes the low tree layer of shade tolerant short trees. Below that is the shrub layer consisting of uh, currants, gooseberries and other soft fruit bushes. Below that is the herbaceous layer consisting of herbs such as this uh, apple mint and that woundwort. Starting from the uh, shrub layer or low tree layer this is a Japanese wine berry, a very choice berry which the Japanese make into wine. <laughs> um, below that, <coughs> covering the ground, is this, uh, which is also a member of the same raspberry, blackberry family, called Rubus nutans, which spreads horizontally by underground rhizomes, so it's liable to turn up all over the place and it produces a small sweet berry. The sixth of the seven layers is the rhizosphere or roots layer where are grown plants that are cultivated for their roots or tubers. This is a, a plant called mashua which comes from the Andes where the potatoes also come from and it's a kind of small potato with a nasturtium-like flower. This is an example of the seventh layer or vertical layer consisting of climbers. In this case a nasturtium and a runner bean which are about to climb this old wild cherry tree. Last year I had a nasturtium and a runner bean trained up a, an edible rowan and they climbed almost to the top. It was strange to see runner beans in the branches of the, the rowan tree. I chose this area because <coughs> it's about the size of a large town garden and I wanted to put over the idea that there's no reason why people living in towns shouldn't contribute to the, the national forest. The advice I give to anyone who asks me how to start a forest garden from scratch is to plant an orchard of standard fruit trees at recommended intervals, that is about 20 feet each way. Then plant dwarf trees in midway between the standard trees. Plant fruit bushes currants and gooseberries in between the trees and plant herbs and perennial vegetables on the uh, on the ground level. I think it's possible to say that it is a system combining maximum output for minimum labor. Forest Gardening by Robert Hart is published by Green Books and is now available through this website or at all good bookshops.